Good morning, everybody. Um, I know this is an unusual way for us to meet. Uh, and if I had my druthers, I'd look at you face to face so that you could converse with me as we have the lecture. But since that's not possible this year, I'll talk to you just direct. Um, we're going to talk about something that's very close to my heart today. And I decided the only visual aid you're going to have is me. Um, you do know, and, and that's been what I've done all along, that I've been a counselor and that I've been trained in counseling. But one of the things that some of you may not know is that along with my counseling, my PhD is also in education. Um, and I honestly believe that we need to see a serious integration of Christian education along with counseling so that the future ministry of our churches will be intact. So what I would like to do today is to talk mostly about Christian education. Our present position that we as a church are in is very serious. Um, one of the things that reflect our day today, where we're at, is that there is a great um, prejudice against God's word. And some of you know that um, instead of having a worldview based on the written word of God and based on the knowledge of the Lord Jesus without that, what we have is a philosophy called relativism and humanism. And uh, what has happened is instead of uh, hanging on to God in, in a creationist view, everything in the public schools is based on evolution. Although evolution is still a theory, it has become a God. And I think that w the history of Christian education has changed through the years. And one of the things that I am aware of is that we don't recognize that need in our church. Um, there was a time in church history when we were based on educating our children. In fact, in the early years of Christian ed, um, it kind of flavored with uh, the whole church program. Now, I have an idea. Let's say, let's say that there are four square blocks. Can you picture that in your head? I wish I could have made a visual aid, but I didn't. One block has the word home on it. Home is very important in the training of our children and our teenagers and folks who are new in the Lord. Then there is another block that says church. Now, church sits on the block below that call, that's named home. There's also another block, two together, school. So home, school, and church. Now, I think that we have neglected something. If we were in real time and I could see you face to face, I would have these blocks sitting on the table in front of us so that you could see. Because the problem problem is, if you remove one block, the top one falls off. So let's say um, 
and and both these blocks are being hurt pretty deeply you you remove home because home has changed um the, the process of government education has tried to take over some of the things that we are supposed to have done according to the old testament and the new testament too is remove some of the home training but let's say we're going to leave that in place there's the home however we have neglected the school part totally so if we remove school from these three blocks take it all the way out and give it to the government the church topples. i don't think we realize how important it is that we center on education christian education in our church program now i think that you must remember that early settlers in our in our united states when they were seeking freedom felt the need that we should understand the scriptures and understand the bible in fact there was a law given in 1647 and it was based and in fact it, it's very interesting that what they called this law it's called the old deluder satan act and it was passed in massachusetts and it required it required the teaching and writing and reading of scriptures to children in a school situation well that certainly has reversed itself through the years hasn't it many of our colleges and universities were centered on uh the scriptures but today many people are trying to teach students how to love and serve god and sending them to public schools where the textbooks are armed and dedicated to the opposite purpose. Um, in, in early America, even the Hornburg book had scriptures in it, the Ten Commandments, but they've taken all of that out. And you, you and I both know that we've seen it but i do believe that god wants us to see what the church ought to do in christian education and history proves that there's usually something um really high in the fact when we we try to um put together our church programs and our and what we do that gets our attention more than anything else back in my day and you all know that i'm an old lady at 86 all right but back in my day christian education became an important aspect of the church in fact um we we majored in Christian education, which was my major when I went to Moody Bible Institute and uh, Southern California Theological Seminary. All of this was my major. And I'm not going to follow the outline today that I gave you as well as the outline that I, I feel led to present right now. Um, in those days, when I majored in Christian ed, many public schools still prayed in the beginning i remember that when i was a child in public school um but there came along a, a ruling in 1962 and in that ruling the court ruled prayer in public schools was unconstitutional and therefore they took prayer out of the school all right 
some of you remember that. And uh, you do remember that along came uh, Darwin and others, and the engine of atheism began to be a part of the public education. Now, the American government education system has masked itself under a label called neutrality. But actually, it promulgates atheism and immoral ethics. Government schools are indoctrinating our children. And because of that, and because we are involved in it, it's removing that block of school and the church is going to topple. Have you noticed that when you send a kid away to college, if you send them away to secular college, and before they went, they're faithful in church and they love the Lord, a lot of them, but they are indoctrinated in public education and turn against the Lord. And when they come back, we've lost them. Look at the attendance in churches. We've lost many, many young people and adults. Now, the ones we keep, all right, and we do keep a few, in, especially in the faith covenant ministries, are because they play the guitar or the drum or an instrument where they can be involved in the worship music. That's the emphasis we have been playing. And we are, in the meantime, making an unnoticed error that will affect the future ministry of our churches. There needs to be a serious integration of counseling and Christian education in our systems. Public schools in America are commissioned under a threat of legal action to teach evolution as the origin story. Yet it's not an observable science, though many people believe it is. Public schools actually promote, they don't just not give a biblical view, but they promote on biblical views in science and in sex education. Any textbook you read has rewritten history. Now, I'm laying down this groundwork because God has told us in the Shema, they call it in the Old Testament, and that's in Deuteronomy 6, 4, and 5, that our job is to teach the children. Let me read it to you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might and your mind. And these words I command you today, God said, shall be in your hearts. You shall teach them diligently to your children. Talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise. They shall be written on the doorposts of your house and your gates. God charged parents in both the Old and the New Testament to teach the children. God has charged we as his disciples. Do you remember in the New Testament when God said, you let those little children come unto me and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. Now, one of our strong desires, and through the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit, as in Acts 1, it says, um, the power of God is going to come upon us when we have 
the gift of the Spirit of God. Are you listening? It's the Spirit of God saying just to do the sermon or maybe just to do the worship music? Or is he speaking to us and saying, look, you've got to be involved in the education of the children. Now, let me tell you this. It's not enough. It's not enough just to have maybe an hour on Sunday morning. Think of the many hours they have in education under a secularist, humanist point of view. The difference between Christian education and public education is described in, I would say, three areas. And that's what I'd like. Number one, the purpose of education. Number two, the content of education. And number three, the control of education. The purpose of education in public schools, all right, is to prepare the students and our children, if they're in public schools, is preparing them to for a lifetime. Now, I don't know how long lifetime might be for all of us. So far for me, it's 86, right? And that's really in the light of eternity that's short. Eternity is forever. And Christian education trains us for the eternity forever, rather than just for that short span of lifetime. Now, I do believe that in, in the purpose of education, it is to, in my estimation, is the main purpose is as it used to be, that they might read the Word of God, study the Word of God, love the Word of God, and build God's church. Now, the purpose of education in secular education is to get ready for a job, learn how to work, uh, find out what you want to do with your life when God has a plan for our life. Now, the content is very different. Now, you've heard of the worldview. If we were together, I would love to have a discussion with you on what is your worldview. But we're not. A worldview is something you should know. Now, our worldview is based on God as a creator. God as our internal uh, guide the Lord Jesus as the one who walks with us 24 7 our worldview is based on the salvation of Jesus Christ our world is based our worldview is based on the fact that the Lord Jesus Christ is God the Son who died on the cross for our sins who rose again from the dead who wants us to live from our worldview is based on that. But of course, when you go to public school, their world is view is based on humanism. Now humanism makes the person the God. When I was a little girl in Sunday school, and I remember many things I learned was a song called Jesus and Others and You. And it said, Jesus is comes first. Okay. Others come second and you come last. However, if you go to public school, you will learn it's you first, always. You first. As humanism, we worship the person rather than the person's God. And that's based in, in history. And I, I want to tell you, I've taught in, in many schools, and I do know this for a fact. I taught philosophy in a public education system, community college, 
and many, many of our children who have gone to church, who understand the gospel, have turned away to humanism and to the philosophy of the humanist philosophers. And there is no absolute in humanism. An absolute is some guide that helps us to understand what God wants us to do or not to do, how to live. Our point of view, our worldview is based on the written word of God, the Bible, which is not allowed at all in the public school system. Um, I'm trying to help you to see that those who control secular education are in the government. Those who will be controlling Christian education are born again believers in the church. Now, let me, let me look at something else. Children, generally between the age of six and 18, must attend the public school. The government mandates it or an authorized school or something has been accredited to teach them. Now, I do believe since God has given parents the mandate to teach their children, sometimes the schools take this out of the parent's hand. May I tell you a new law that has uh, just come um, into effect? Is that even taking the preschool, many parents have had preschools in the church where they would go before they go to secular. But now they're putting preschool in the educational system as the first part of our training. Since Christian education differs from public school education, I do, do believe that we ought to really think about it and ask God, what can we as a church do? Do we want to have total Christian education? Or do we want to have traditional education where humanism is the basis of the teaching? So may I ask you from the bottom of my heart, what can we as covenant churches do? Heavenly Father, and I'm going to read to you a prayer of uh, our for our educational system, and I hope that I won't have to end this until I've read this to you. I don't know how long I've been recording, but I want to tell you, let me tell you what I prayed here among our churches on the National Day of Prayer in Canton, Kansas when we all got together and asked God for our systems. Personally, I believe, and, and if you are interested in this, that we can set up a program, all right, where we can help through the program of homeschooling, and we can do it through the church with our church people. I have a whole plan set up for that. If we would set it up, use it in faith covenant churches and center on training the children in our churches and educating them, then we don't have to take the rewritten history. We don't have to take the history that they have written and taken out the church. We do not have to take the sex education that the LGBTQ people have been helping to write. We will be able to teach our children that God has created man and God has created women and we have a purpose in life. And God didn't intend for us to change it. All right. We do not have to remove the Ten Commandments. Instead, we can teach the Ten Commandments. 
Here's the prayer I prayed that day. Heavenly Father, we approach you as the Lord of all. You are the sovereign power who is keenly aware of our warfare in this world system. One of the strongholds that's being attacked by the enemies of God and by the enemies of our Christian worldview is education. We know that our students should be taught godly character, love, kindness, honesty, integrity, faithfulness, patriotism, and the virtues of focused work. But this is lacking in our world today. Our students no longer learn to fear God and to acknowledge him as the creator of this world. The influence of postmodern thought has left its mark on the 21st century education. Dangerous concept of pluralism and the rejection of absolute truth is very evident. We know that in, in the early days, the textbooks in colonial days promoted a faith-based worldview. But today's curriculum is replete with materials that accept and promote co many concepts that collide with the written word of God. Lord, touch the hearts of those who lead our public schools. Bring our children back to a place where they can learn of God. Lord, we just acknowledge that today's educational system has drastically departed from what God established first in this nation through leaders who actually thought God's counsel. And of course, in our history books, they're denying that. They're denying that. So the state of our educational system looks hopeless. We know it isn't. We know that there are Christian teachers out there who are promoting it, but they are not allowed. We have heard of court cases after court cases of some atheist parent who has uh, bought some teacher who maybe has quoted a scripture verse, or perhaps has it even introduced even some pledge allegiance to the United States flag. My goal and my desire is to see the Lord in education. Now, we can do this. I do know of a lot of home school groups that would work with the church. I know one major one. And if God lays this on the heart of others who feel like I do, that this ought to be one of the goals of the church, then let's get together. Let's work. Let's make a program of Christian education within the confines of our church. That's my goal, and that's my vision. I give this to you with deep prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.